Back at the LA Auto Show, there's a bright orange 2019 Corvette ZR1 convertible on a show stand, glimmering under the lights, being ogled by admirers and measured by competitors. Just over 100 miles away, at the oldest permanent road course in the U.S., at the western edge of the Mojave Desert, two B-top ZR1 coupes wait in a pit garage. They're filthy, with a couple of vehicle lifetimes between them. One is covered stern to snout in stick on swirly camouflage, roughly applied, with bits of the bright red paint showing beneath. The other is half covered, but the exposed parts are unfinished with trim pieces missing. They're dead cars walking, since pre-production cars like the Sander Brutal lives in the jaws of a crusher. We're not here to look at them, of course. The 755 horsepower small blocks, force-fed with massive superchargers, quake to life. Resonating off the garages, they almost sound unrestricted, but without the teeth gritting resonance you get when you straight pipe a thing like this. I turned to Taj Juicter, proud father of unreasonably quick Chevrolets, and asked if the cars here today are competition exhaust or something. He wrinkles his nose a bit. Nope, these are the stock pipes, street legal. The ZR1 is a few decibels louder than the Z06, he says. To call this an understatement is generous. This is the loudest Corvette the company has ever made. That's pretty much the ZR1 in microcosm, everything's turned up a bit. Juicter and his comrades are gleeful, telling us about things that their new LT5 engine broke during the four years they developed it. Like dynamometers. Lots of them. The exhaust stacks would get so hot from the blast furnace that is this motor that they'd crack. Jordan Lee, the GM small block program manager, tells us this like the proud dad of an especially rowdy kid. So they tried water cooling jets. Then, showing the seriousness to which the GM engineers took this problem, they threw some money at it and built the stacks out of Inconel, a nickel chromium super alloy. That did the trick. It took 10 times as long to validate the engine output, Lee says, because so much stuff broke. Engineers love these stories. They're good stories, though.